Good morning, uh, my listeners, and good morning those who are watching. And praise the praise the Lord. This morning, I'm delighted to be here and uh, present the Word of God, our devotion this morning. And uh, our sign interpreter this morning is Rosalind Jiguna, and my name is Lucy Gasheru, and I worship here in this church. And so this morning, I want us to begin with a word of prayer. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you so much for giving us yet another day to see your goodness in this land of the living. My Father and my God, as we sit at your feet this morning and listen to your word, may you nourish our bodies and our souls and our mind so that as we go out, Lord, we will go out equipped with your word. Be with us. May your Holy Spirit hover around here and give us clarity into your matters. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So yes, this morning I'm delighted to bring you the word of God and our devotion. And um, uh, in this month of August, our theme is Arise, Claim Your Mountain. And we are dwelling on the book of Joshua 14, 16 to 16, uh, all the way. And uh, it is about claiming your mountain. And uh, today's topic is the Bible and the deliverance. And our text will come from the book of Exodus 3, 7 and 8. And the Bible basically means the word, the word and the deliverance. What does the word do to deliver you? And uh, the text in, uh, three, in Exodus 3, 7, I will read. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Havites, and Jebusites now live. And this is the word of the Lord. Praise be the name of the Lord. And so three things comes out here, there in this text, that God sees, God hears, and God comes to deliver. I love these scriptures so much, and I'm so passionate about them. And the time, there is a, I, we, we read them in Sunday school, but when, I, when these words were spoken to me during a family loss, an evangelist had come to our house or to our home, and he comforted us with these words. And from, them, from then on, I adopted them and hid them in my heart. So as I share, I pray that we will all be blessed and that you, will, you too will hide these words where moth will not steal, nor will it decay. So we see Moses was born when, when there was hatred for Jews in Egypt, who had increased greatly in number or numerically. He was rescued by Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter. And so he had the privilege of growing up or being brought up in the palace. This means that God was preparing him for something bigger and greater in the future. He had, Moses had three phases of life. He had 40 years at the Pharaoh's court, becoming somebody. You know, when you're brought up in the palace, you become somebody. 40 years in the wilderness now, discovering that he's nobody. And 40 years finding out how God can take nobody and make them somebody. Moses' second phase of tending sheep in the wilderness was almost coming to an end. One day, Moses is fascinated by a humbling, uh, by a burning bush. He decides to get closer and see, extra, and, and see this extraordinary fire that was burning, yet it was not being consumed. Moses was over to find out the mystery as he approached the bush. He heard a voice of God speaking to him, telling him, Moses, remove your sandals, for you as where you are standing, is holy ground. 
the Lord told Moses these things. These three things. One, I have seen the affliction of my people. Genesis 28, 15 says, I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not live until I have done what I promised you. So your father in heaven, your father and my father knows what we need, even before we ask. God knows our names and the number of our hairs on our head. Jesus told his disciples not to make a big display over their giving, but to give in secret. And the father that sees in secret would reward them, would reward them openly. So when we pray, he, he tells us to pray to the father that seeth in secret and he shall reward us greatly. Often, the evil one or the Satan seeks to deceive by whispering lies that God does not see. And the truth of the matter is, God sees. When we read the earlier chapter, Moses, Moses goes out and sees an Egyptian mistreating a Hebrew. And he looked the other way, he looked the other way and the other way. And when he didn't see anyone, he killed the Egyptian. When we often look this way and that way, we don't look up. But God is actually watching us. God was watching Moses. God can see what we are going through this country, the pandemic. And I can tell you that what we just need to do is to look up and to see God. We often look on the sideways, but we don't look at God. Let's focus on God. He will come and save us. My sisters and brothers, we can trust this God who is the same yesterday, who was the same yesterday, who is the same today, and will be the same tomorrow. He doesn't change. David thought that he had gotten away with the sin of Bathsheba, that no man saw him while he was sinning, but God saw him. When we are doing things, good or bad, God can see. We can be of great comfort or it can be of great concern. It all depends on what we are doing. If I'm in great need and I'm, thank, I'm thankful for God, to God that God can see me, if I'm doing something good, I am grateful to God because he can see me. But even stepping out of line, I'm terrified that God sees me and I'm already judged. So what are you doing will depend on how God sees you. God's people were in great distress in Egypt. They were ordered to, they were ordered to throw their baby boys into the river as the Pharaoh was seeking to weaken the nation. They had become the slaves to the Egyptians and they were under a heavy attack. They, were, they had to turn to God and God had their sorrow and distress. My daughter tells me, tells my grandsons that when they do something wrong, she will, in school at home or at home, she will see. And they always, always ask him, they ask her, ask her, Mom, how many eyes do you have? And she says, I can see everywhere. But they always respond and say, God is the only one who can see everywhere. Even our children know that God sees everywhere. God has seen your misery. He has seen what you are going through. He has seen amekuona and ameniona. God has not only seen, but he has also heard your cry. God sees and hears. Life has become so intolerable. They were, they, they, the life had become and even has become intolerable nowadays. They were crying out to God because they were of their process. They were given hard task to build pyramids in the desert with heat and all the odd jobs they had to do. Slavery is a horrible thing. No, but no person or authority has the right to subjugate another person to seek control their lives or control their lives. Recently, we have seen in the, new, in the newspapers and in, on our television sets, Children who have been taken into, into slavery in the Middle East, crying out 
but thankfully to the government they have got, the government had them and they have been rescued. Most of them have been rescued. And the opening portion of 3-7, the, uh, 3 -7 Exodus, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in, who are in Egypt and I have heard their cry of their taskmasters. Not only does God, Lord our God, see, he also hears his people. Have you cried unto God and it seems as, so, as though he has not heard you? Psalm 41 tells us, Hear me when I call, O God of my, righteous, o, o God of my righteousness. Though I have opened your ear, you, though they though have opened your ear to me when I am in distress, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. And Psalm 27, 7 says, Hear me, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. Prophet Isaiah says, God's ear is not heavy, that he cannot hear you, that he, that he is not deaf, but your sins have separated you and me from God. There is something about tears that touches our hearts. If you happen to see a stranger crying, you will also feel compelled somehow to shed the tears or to comfort them. That desire to reach out and comfort someone when they are crying comes from God. God is a compassionate God. Just as someone's tears touch your heart, your tears also touch the heart of God. Just know that God is compassionate. He will touch you. He has a heart and he is coming. Number three, God has not only seen, he has not only heard, but he has come to deliver you. Hallelujah. God is coming to deliver us. He is going to deliver us from this pandemic. Now, finally, in Exodus 3, 8, the Lord our God declares, and I am come to deliver them and out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land and to a good land and a large one, for that matter, a land that is flowing with milk and honey, and to the place of Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. Now, our God sees the affliction of his people. He hears their cry and knows the sorrow of his people. He is moved with compassion to move on behalf of his people. He is moved to now calm down personally. Exodus 3, 8 reveals that the Lord moves in three folds. He moves to deliver from the affliction. He says, I'm come down to deliver them from the Egyptian. The Lord is close to those that are brokenhearted. He saves those with contrite spirit. That is according to Psalm 34, 18 and 19. Number two, he is moved to establish them in a better circumstances. When the Lord delivers you, he is going to deliver you to a good circumstance. He was going to deliver them to a good land. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord will uphold him with his right hand according to Psalm 37, 23 and 24. And number three, God is moved to bless with abundant benefits. And so, to bring them into a good land and large, flowing with milk and honey, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the good, the God of our salvation. So when the Lord delivers, he delivers us to better places. It is nice when people say, I have, I have been watching the sorrow that you have going, been going through. And then some say, I know the pressures and some uh, you are facing. And some, it is, not, it is not even good to know. Someone says, I was doing, you know, I have come to help you. As I was doing my daily devotion the other day, I, there's something that came across. A man who was, had a gym in the U.S. and people, and he closed down. And the people who used to frequent the gym gathered together and they called him and they offered their sacrifices. When somebody is in distress, you not only call, but you also act. Love in action. So when people say, just call me when time, when, any time, I will hear you. It is nice to know that someone is really listening to you. My brothers and sisters this morning, I want to encourage you. Do not sit there. Go to God's word, which is yea and amen, and he will deliver you. Not only will he deliver you, he will take you from one step 
to another. I pray that this morning that the Lord who hears and sees and delivers will come and deliver you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.